A freaky eater is someone who takes an eating habit to the extreme. Kelly has eaten nothing but cheesy potatoes for 30 years. I love cheese and potatoes. It's like crack to me. I gotta have it. She's revolted by other foods. I want you to try this because it's a green vegetable. <coughs> and her husband worries that she's destroying her health. I'm afraid that I'm gonna come home and find out that she's had a heart attack. Can specialists Mike Dow and JJ Virgin turn Kelly around? Every bite of cheesy potatoes is like digging your grave. Before it's too late. Kelly's health is a ticking time bomb. She's got to change now. My wife, Kelly, is a freaky eater. 34-year-old Kelly eats nothing but cheesy potatoes morning, noon, and night. I love cheese and potatoes. It's ooey, gooey, and just yum, yum, yummy. Each and every day, Kelly eats a minimum of eight potatoes and four cups of cheese, amounting to a whopping 8,000 calories and 176 grams of fat a day. When I eat cheesy potatoes, I mean, it instantly puts a smile on my face. Over the course of a year, Kelly consumes about 3,000 pounds of potatoes, 23 times more than the average American, and close to 1,500 cups of cheese. It's definitely more than food. It's like crack to me. I gotta have it. As a child, Kelly ate other foods, but cheesy potatoes soon became her favorite. My mom took me to a fast food restaurant, and they had cheese fried fries there, and ever since I had those, I just fell in love with them. Kelly's eating habits changed around age four when she visited with relatives. There she was forced to eat food that didn't agree with her. My mom told them that I don't like ham and eggs. They made me eat them and I threw it up all over the table. Since that time, my diet has consisted of cheese and potatoes. Every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for probably 30 years. Can I get three orders of french fries and can I have cheese put on those fries? I won't eat at work. I'll go through a drive through at lunchtime. I don't really eat in front of other people. I don't really want people to know how much I'm consuming. Me and Kelly, we've been married seven years. You're cooking me. I'm out of here. When Patrick's cooking, I'm usually in the living room watching TV because I don't even like being in the kitchen. Kelly can't stand to smell or even touch most foods, especially vegetables. Well, I want you to try this because it's a green vegetable. Every time I've tried to cook her a little something extra, she just refuses. Just try a little taste. I can't, I can't. Come here, baby. It's okay. It's traumatic for me. How's your dinner, babe? I'm good. Because of her aversion to other foods, Kelly even eats in a different room than Patrick. My husband absolutely hates when I don't sit down and eat dinner with him. Over the last decade, Kelly's freaky eating has caused her to gain over 150 pounds. It's taken a serious toll on her marriage and her health. My energy level honestly is like slim to none. I am headed for the grave if I don't change my ways. I'm afraid that I'm gonna come home and find out that she's had a heart attack. If she doesn't get some kind of help, she's not going to last much longer. In five years, I may not be around. I don't want to die yet. I don't want to live like this anymore. Before Kelly's health deteriorates any further, Patrick has asked nutritionist JJ Virgin and psychotherapist Dr. Mike Dow to intervene for a week of intense therapy. Kelly. Hi. 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 Don't be alarmed. We were sent by your husband, Patrick. I'm Dr. Mike Dell. I'm a licensed psychotherapist specializing in addictive behaviors and disordered eating. I'm JJ Virgin. Hi. I'm a certified nutrition specialist and a certified health and fitness specialist. Can we yeah. chat with you a bit? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. sure. All right. When JJ and Dr. Dow walked up, I didn't know what to think. It kind of startled me. Why do you eat in secret in an alley? I don't want people to know what I eat. I'm ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. How has this impacted your health? I mean, right now, I'm OK. But heart disease runs in the family and diabetes. Kelly's health is a ticking time bomb. This is a critical time for Kelly. It's really make or break. 
I am so worried about it. I know your husband's worried about it. And I also see that you know that the french fries and the cheese is actually increasing the risk of those things, but you don't know how to change it. Is that right? I, do you want to change it? I want to change it. Coming up. It's disgusting. The experts give Kelly a wake-up call. Kelly, what do you want to say to these cheesy potatoes? <laughs> Kelly has been eating nothing but cheesy potatoes for the past 30 years. With her eating habits continuing to spiral out of control, her husband Patrick has called in the Freaky Eaters experts to help. The next step for JJ and I is to actually see Kelly in her home environment. So how many times a day would you say that this is your meal, cheesy potatoes? Twice a day when I'm working, because I usually don't eat breakfast. But on the weekends, I'll make a burrito. Cheesy Jeez. potato burrito? Yeah. A cheese and potato diet can create a host of problems, heart disease, diabetes, mood disorders. I'd really like to hear what your husband has to say. Baby! I wanted to hear how her food addiction was affecting their marriage. You're not in the same rooms eating right. together, and you're certainly not going out to dinner and having those times, those memories that make marriages really work. Patrick, what's your worst fear? That I'm going to wake up some morning and she's going to be gone. <laughs> My dream for the two of us is to spend the next 50 years together. <laughs> the good news is we're going to help you to get there. Next, JJ and Dr. Dow have a reality check for Kelly. I want Kelly to see just how many potatoes and just how much cheese she consumes in just four months. All right, Dr. Dow. Watch Kelly's face was incredible. She was horrified. That's uh, 900 pounds of potatoes, which represents the amount of potatoes that you eat in four months. <sighs> it's disgusting. I thought it was a year's worth. When I found out they were only four months worth, it disgusted me. The other half, the cheese. <sighs> Hundred and twenty pounds of cheese. Each of those bags represents a month's worth of cheese for you. What I'd like you to do is pick one of those up and pour it onto the potatoes. <sighs> Lifting the bag, it was heavy. Oh my god. Thirty pounds. It's sinking in that I do actually consume this much cheese and it's it's gut wrenching. Kelly, what do you want to say to these cheesy potatoes? <laughs> I don't even want to look at it. It's disgusting. This was painful, difficult, but it was necessary so she'd really come to reality of how much she eats. Our next step is to see what damage you've done already to your health. Okay. Watch the potato. Kelly has submitted a blood sample for testing. Now the results are in. The first thing that I wanted to look for was metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a precursor to both diabetes and heart disease. It's characterized by a cluster of factors, the first one being triglycerides. Triglycerides are fats in the blood, and they're driven up by sugar, starch, and damaged fats. If you have metabolic syndrome, you'll have higher than 150 for your triglycerides. Yours are 359. The stakes for Kelly are high. She's got to change now. I thought I was healthy. I just thought I was just overweight. You're morbidly obese. You've got metabolic syndrome. You are in no way healthy. I'm very scared. This is the first time I've ever seen anything on black and white of how sick I am. The good news is it can all be fixed. But every bite of cheesy potatoes is like digging your grave. And we can reduce a lot of this in a matter of months if you are willing to go through what it takes to do it. I'm willing. I can't go on like this anymore. I am motivated now. Whatever it takes. Coming up, can Kelly conquer her fear of vegetables? I'd rather reach in a toilet than touch a vegetable. Kelly's addiction to cheesy potatoes has brought her to a health crisis and put her marriage at risk. Patrick, what's your worst fear? That I'm going to wake up some morning and she's going to be gone. <laughs> 
Kelly is willing to make changes. So on the second day, Dr. Dow begins to address Kelly's phobia of touching other foods by using graded exposure therapy. Have a seat for me. Okay. Graded exposure therapy is baby steps. You take what you can already do, and then you add one piece at a time. You know what this is? Box. <laughs> box. To allow Kelly to focus only on texture, she won't be able to see what she is touching. Are you ready for the first step? I'm ready. OK. I always want to start out with a gimme, because it's going to give her the confidence to then take the next step. So go ahead and stick your hand in there. I was getting really nervous. I've never really touched other foods before. I slowly put my hand in there. It's cold. It's hard. What is it? It feels like a potato. It's a potato. <laughs> <laughs> the next step was broccoli. She has an extreme aversion to all vegetables. So this one was going to be a little bit more difficult. I'd rather reach in a toilet than touch a vegetable. What does that feel like? It feels like a dry sponge. Is it unpleasant? Is it? Is it? Is no, it, it's not it gross unpleasant. You out? No. Do you know what that is? Broccoli. Uh huh. We then took it to tomatoes. These are wet and slimy, and these definitely represent a challenge for Kelly. There's like holes in it, mm -hmm. and it's real weird. Do you know what that is? Tomato. Mm hmm. <laughs> You're not avoiding. I'm trying not to. I really want to do this. When Kelly kept touching the tomato, I knew that she was ready for the biggest challenge yet, the taste test. Now it's actually time to eat some things. I'm sitting there thinking, oh my god, they're going to have me trying some strange things. Right in front of you, we're going to tell you what's in that one. It is just cheese, potatoes, and a tortilla, all stuff you yeah. already like. what I'm used to, mm. normal. Each burrito has cheesy potatoes, and then we've added in a new food to it. One down. I was getting more concerned because I figure we're going to get heavier and heavier into the different foods. Look in there. That's a new color for you. <laughs> That's green. Seeing my wife eat romaine lettuce, I was excited. I'm overwhelmed that I did it without throwing it up on the table. Yeah. Kelly eating romaine lettuce turned off this irrational fear that says, if I eat a new food, I will vomit. Two down. We saved the most difficult food for last, ham. This was the food that she remembered eating as a child and throwing up. OK, the grand finale. I immediately felt queasy in my stomach. I tried to keep it in my mouth, but I just couldn't. That one's a little hard for okay. me. But Adi wants to reject it. OK. This was what you ate at four years old that you didn't like. Damn. I wanted her to understand that this is not a failure. You just ate something that you don't like and maybe will never like. But the important thing is, is you tried it. We all have foods we don't like, but it's actually going to allow you to make some healthy choices. I just ate things that I've never eaten in my life. That's a whole new life to me. You've gone through the hardest hurdles now. That's right. Building on Kelly's success with touching and tasting new foods, JJ moves on to another sticking point, exercise. Our goal here is to get you walking. I've never installed walking into my weekly activity because I'm tired all the time. You're a regular exerciser, right? Yeah, I walk. Yeah. I invited Patrick to join us because he's already a walker, and I wanted to make sure that he was there to support her. So we're going to take the first step today. But we have something else that we're going to add into the mix. <laughs> I had Kelly carry a 10-pound bag of potatoes because I wanted her to really feel the weight of her cheesy potato habit. You're holding 10 pounds of potatoes, but in reality, Kelly, You've got over 100 pounds of fat that you stored because of eating those potatoes. I was really struggling to keep up with her. I was out of breath. How are you feeling? It's getting harder. Really, actually, it's about the equivalent of what you eat a day, just so you know. <sighs> I got to take a breath. <sighs> By the time I was done carrying the potatoes, it felt like I'd been dragging a tour bus. Oh. 
Want to leave the potatoes yes, behind? Yes, I do. Just take those potatoes and give them a heave. I'm done. I can't believe that I let it get this bad. I'm never going to hear you breathe like this again, right? <laughs> right. Right? Oh. You're going to walk, and you, we'll hear in a month, it's like, this was easy. Let's go another mile. It was fantastic for Kelly to feel that burden and then get rid of that burden forever. Oh, it feels better not carrying that. Coming up, will Kelly undo all of her hard work? I know they're so bad for me, but I can't fight the cravings. The experts have given Kelly the confidence to start trying different foods on her own. For the next four days, she'll try to break her cheesy potato addiction with a new health regimen. On Kelly's first day, Patrick presents her with a new vegetable to taste. Peas. Yeah, there's no peas. It tastes like eating a plant. She didn't like snow peas, but she still tried it. She didn't gag. The next day, Kelly agrees to exercise. Patrick and I walking together, it's wearing me out, but I feel good just to get out and about instead of being stuck in front of the TV. Got your broccoli for you. OK. On the third day, Kelly attempts to try another new vegetable. I'm really nervous about the broccoli. I have no clue what it's going to taste like. To overcome her fear, Kelly adds a familiar topping which only reminds her of what she's missing. Can you hand me the seasoned fries, please? Sure. It really hit me that I wanted the cheese and potatoes. I probably think about cheese and potatoes at least once an hour. I couldn't resist. You want to come sit down and eat with me? No, I'm going to stand at the counter. Kelly's biggest struggle has been the craving for her cheesy potatoes. When she gets the cravings, she gets irritable. So I don't really push it that much. With cheesy potatoes at her side, Kelly debates whether or not to eat the broccoli. It's not bad cooked. I don't think she liked it a lot, but she ate the little bit that I gave her. After eating the broccoli, Kelly can resist temptation no longer. I know they're so bad for me, but I can't fight the cravings. And Kelly is still unable to sit down at the table with Patrick. I'm still weird about people watching me eat. Right now, it's still difficult for me. How are you? How are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you. It's been a while. Bye. On day seven, Dr. Dow and JJ return to find out how Kelly has done in their absence. I have tried some new foods, snow peas, broccoli. I was thrilled to hear those results. This is a woman who was scared to death of a Brussels sprout. I did slip. I did have some french fries. Now, here's the thing. You're physically addicted to cheesy potatoes. So even though I know you want them gone forever, that doesn't happen overnight. We want to crowd out those cheesy potatoes. But that means we have to find more foods that you enjoy to be able to crowd it out. It just made me feel better, because I was kind of kicking myself in the butt for slipping up. How about the eating in the same room together? Um, that's still a little bit of a struggle. Okay. Kelly had a lot of successes, but I was a little disappointed she wasn't able to sit across from her husband at a table yet. That's something we need to work on. So Dr. Dow and JJ take Kelly outside to confront her biggest challenges. As soon as I saw the table in the backyard, I got really nervous. She realized those seats are facing each other. I'm going to have to sit down and eat with my husband. The experts are also asking her to try eating a green salad. This is going to be hard. OK. Is it enough? Yeah. OK. This is what I've been wanting, is to sit down and enjoy a wholesome meal with Kelly. <sighs> I can't do this. <laughs> if she can pull this off, I'll know that we can leave in good faith. I kept telling myself, I have to do this. I have to try.
I was like waiting to see what the reaction was going to be. I'm not used to eating salad and my body was wanting to reject it. You just ate the salad. That was a good thing. This was a big test for Kelly and she made it through it. This was the first salad I've ever eaten in my entire life. I think eventually I'll start really liking it. This is nice eating outside. It was nice to sit with my husband. I'm still nervous about eating in front of people and all that, but it's definitely something that I'm going to work on. Do you realize how far you have come? Did you think a week ago you could even have one bite of salad? This whole experience has taught me that if I put my mind to it, I can do anything. Good work. Thank you. Good Thank work. you. Thank you. When I first met Kelly, she was ashamed. She was hopeless. She had no energy. Really, we're so proud of you. Thank you. And now I see a woman who is actually happy, strong, and ready to live her life. If I could do this in a few short days, I could move mountains in a couple months. The future looks good for me.